I've got three fun crafty TikTok tries for you guys today. Welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. I am in the middle of a little series where I am trying things I've seen on TikTok and I found three easy holiday crafts that have pretty simple supplies and look pretty easy to do. The first craft is going to be making like really large snowflakes using some brown paper bags and then we have a little twist using a Dollar Tree product. And then we're gonna try this one hack that I saw on TikTok to make some glitter ornaments using some Dollar Tree ornaments that are plastic, which is nice with the little kiddos. And we're gonna be using hairspray. Um, a lot of people use a variety of items and this is one that I saw that worked and you know, I definitely have this on hand. So figured I'd give that a try. And then we're gonna make these little cute like beanies and like gnomes using some yarn, a toilet paper roll, and a bead, a wooden bead that I had on hand. So let's go ahead and jump in and make this little snowflake. So to make this first craft, you are going to need eight brown paper bags. And like I said, I picked up this little LED light package from the Dollar Tree. And you're gonna glue the eight paper bags, just one on top of the next, facing in the same direction until you glue on your last bag. Make sure when you're gluing, you are gluing straight down the center of the bag and gluing a horizontal little bit down at the bottom of the bag. So you're creating like an upside down T with the glue. Once your last bag is glued on, you are going to cut like a little triangle at the top ends of the bag. So like where you would insert food, you're gonna make that into like a little pointy piece. And then you can go ahead and cut out any design that you want from the sides of the bag. For this one, I just did like some triangles, but you can do circles, which I'll do in, in a second, or you can do some squiggly things, really just whatever you want. Because I wanted to incorporate these LED lights somewhere in my snowflake later on, I did end up using a hole punch and tried to get my hole kind of as close as possible to the center. Unfortunately, my little hole punch didn't go all the way to the center, which is where the glue was anyways, but we're gonna see kind of the repercussions of this design, and I'll show you some other options in the future as well. But once my hole was punched, I just kind of put batteries into my little LED and then fed the LED lights through the little holes. I did have to do like a double hole punch to make it slightly wider, and this took some time just because you don't want to rip the paper and you want to make sure that like almost every little crease of the bags has one light um, from the little pack. So it does take some time. It didn't go very quickly for me. So if you are trying this yourself, just kind of keep that in mind. But once the lights are completely fed through, you pretty much just open up the bags and connect the two unglued ends together. I use binder clips because then when you're done with the Christmas season, you can just fold it back up. But if you want, there is the option of gluing the ends together and having the snowflake be permanently open. So here's a second little batch that I made where I cut out little half circles from the sides and punched two holes just to kind of keep it more symmetrical this time. And here I'm actually gluing the ends together so that this one will be permanently opened as a snowflake and it won't be collapsible and like easy to store away for next year. For this one, I actually took some yarn and put it through like the two holes that I hole punched to hang this up. And so these little holes did come in handy even though I didn't feed the lights through this snowflake. <music> 
For the last snowflake that I made, I decided to cut out a hole in the center by folding the bags in half and just kind of cutting out a little triangle, therefore making a diamond. Once I cut all the bags in the same location, I went ahead and glued them the same way and cut off that little triangle or pointy part at the tops of all of the bags. Then for this one, I actually did two cutouts per side. So I did like a larger triangle and then a very skinny, slender triangle as well on both sides. And I do like the design of this one. So for this snowflake, again, I opened it up and I secured it with binder clips. And then later I did feed in the LED lights. I had to take it out of that other snowflake. Fed it through this one. It was a little bit easier because of the larger hole in the center, but I mean, it did still take some time. I secured the ends together with a binder clip. So on one side, you can see this is like the back side. And then I tucked in the little battery pack into one of the bags so that it's not like just hanging out somewhere. And I went ahead and strung a piece of yarn through the center hole again to secure this and tie it up on our chandelier. So to make the next craft, again, you're gonna need some plastic ornaments from the Dollar Tree, some hairspray, um, any glitter, they sell it at Dollar Tree as well. And I actually picked up this paint pen from Dollar Tree as well. So you pretty much can do this entire thing using Dollar Tree products. Obviously you would need different hairspray because I don't think they sell this huge bottle, but you get the point. So the first thing you're gonna do is spray enough of the hairspray so that there's like enough liquid in there to fully coat the inside of the ornament. Uh, if you notice that there isn't enough, go ahead and spray some more and you probably will eventually have a little too much in your ornament, so you're gonna to wanna to tip this over and just kind of let it drain for a few minutes. I actually don't think I let it drain or like kind of um, escape enough, and you'll see why in a little bit, but you wanna make sure that it's just like, it's tacky in there, but not super liquidy. So then once it's kind of tacky and fully coated, you're gonna pour in your glitter and then just turn the ornament around so that the glitter fully covers the entire inside. Once you have your entire ornament covered, you're gonna dump out the excess, and then you have your glitter ornament, and you're gonna let this dry. You can reinsert the top little portion that lets you hang it from a tree, and then I use this gold paint pen that I picked up from the Dollar Tree just to make a design on the ornament. So on one of them, I wrote ho, 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 just kind of around the circumference or surface area of this ornament. And then the other one I figured I would make for my niece. Um, it's going to be her first Christmas. So I just went ahead and made this for my brother and his little cute daughter. So here you can see later on, um, a lot of glitter I noticed was like kind of accumulating at the bottom of the ornaments. And so I think that kind of just showed that it wasn't fully secure. Maybe there was too much liquid and so the glitter kind of got soaked up in the liquid and just kind of was chunky in there. So I went ahead and dumped that out, sprayed some more hairspray and kind of just recoated the inside of the ornament. I put the glitter back in, put some extra glitter, shook it up, and I did get a better coat. But like I said, I don't think I really let all of the hairspray get out of the ornament. And since it was then more liquidy in there, the liquid kind of just picked up the glitter and kept carrying it around until it made just kind of clumps. So make sure you let your ornament with the hairspray like sit upside down kind of leaking for a good two or three minutes at least. Overall though, I am happy with these ornaments. I think they're cute and obviously very inexpensive. You can choose whatever color glitter you want and it would also probably make for a fun activity with your kids. So the last little craft was also really fun. I used a toilet paper roll, two different colors of yarn and a small wooden bead that I had on hand. 
and I measured out yarn strips about 12 inches, 13 inches long, and just cut a whole bunch. Um, this did take a while. I could have come up with a better strategy of like wrapping the yarn around um, something that was like six inches long and then just cutting one end to create all of the strips at once. But I didn't have that like prepared. So I just enjoyed a show and cut these strips one at a time until I figured I'd probably have enough to make one little beanie. Once all of my strips were cut, I cut off about a half an inch thick piece of this toilet paper roll. And this is gonna serve as like the base of the beanie. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one strand of yarn, fold it in half, put the loop through the toilet paper roll, and then pull the ends of that same piece of yarn through the loop and then pull it tight so that it's nice and secure around our little toilet paper roll. And then you're pretty much just gonna repeat this process until the entire roll has been covered. I'll show you another close up in just a second so that you can see how I'm inserting the loop once I already have a large number of strands connected to the toilet paper roll. So again here, we're inserting the loop uh, inside the end of the toilet paper roll that doesn't have a bunch of strands coming out of it, so that when we then pull the end strands through the loop, they end up on the side with all of the other strands. I hope that makes sense. If not, I hope the video does it justice. As you can tell, this step does also take a while, so put on a nice show and enjoy the process. So finally, I got the last one looped onto the toilet paper roll and none of the toilet paper roll was showing, so that was kind of my sign as I can wrap this up. And then you go ahead and you feed in the strands. You're gonna tuck those and put them back into the toilet paper roll so that you kind of have this nice rim around what is going to be your beanie. Then just take another strand of yarn and go ahead and secure this with a knot. You wanna leave enough space so that if you wanna just have a beanie, you could put a cotton ball or a little golf ball or ping pong ball inside this hole of the beanie um, to secure it and just have it you know, look like a beanie. You don't want it to be too close to the rim and you, it would look a little weird if you have like a Marge Simpson-like beanie. So just try to pick a spot on your yarn strands that would seem appropriate to resemble a beanie. And then you're gonna use some scissors and just kind of trim off the excess so that you have a nice cute little puff ball on top. So you could go ahead and use this little beanie as decoration, you could tie a string through it and just make this the ornament that you wanted, but I wanted to go ahead and make a little gnome. I know those are really popular right now. Part of me likes the gnome vibes that people are putting out and some of me is like, eh, I could deal without the gnome and I just kind of like the beanie, but I figured I would show you this technique uh, all the way through if you like the gnomes more than just the beanie. But I went ahead and wrapped just this yarn around some contact paper foam board that I had on hand and I just trimmed one of the ends so I'm not going to trim the other side I just trimmed this end kind of just creating a bunch of loose strands of yarn then using another piece of yarn I just tied a little knot at the top kind of like what I did with the beanie but this is just kind of to create 
a nice little ball of yarn at the top and have a bunch of loose strands at the end resembling kind of like the beard of the gnome. The ball portion that we are creating by tying this knot is going to be inserted into the beanie. Now you could go ahead and glue this in there but I just kind of shoved it in there and it's hanging on pretty nicely. Then once that is shoved in as far as you feel comfortable I went ahead and trimmed off the like beard so that it wasn't super you know ugly it looked like he kind of tried to take care of himself and I just kind of rounded out the outer edges as well. Before I glued on the bead, I went ahead and took a piece of yarn and fed it through the beanie so that I could then hang this as an ornament on a tree or on our door handles or just some place to have it be extra decorative. I think a crochet hook would probably work a little bit better in this situation, but I didn't have one like readily available, so I had to improvise by taking out the gray yarn and just using my finger to create a little hole and feed the yarn through this way. Then I reinserted the little beard yarn piece and it was time to glue on the nose. I just used some hot glue here and tried to glue the bead more to the beanie than to the loose strands of the beard. Uh, just so that it would kind of stay in place a little bit better. And like I said, you can hang this on your tree or on like a little cabinet door handle or your front door. This craft is just really versatile and can really can work wherever you want it. I'd like to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed these three little crafts. If you try any of these, let me know how it goes down below in the comments. Also, let me know if you try them with your kids. I would have loved to have... Aubrey participate, but I did want to try these kind of by myself first so that I know what takes a lot of time, what would be easier or more difficult for her. I do think that the paper bags are like one of the easiest ones that you can do to make the big snowflakes and they have like the biggest impact because they're just so large. But the glitter ornaments are also fun too. I mean, what kid doesn't love glitter? <laughs> um, at least, you know, the girls that I know. They all love glitter. So a glitter ornament would probably also go over pretty well with the kids. Don't forget to check out some of my other TikTok tries in my playlist that I've linked above and put down below in the description box. And subscribe if you guys are new. I'd love to have you stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.